Hello modders, I'm finally back with the How to Downgrade Your Fallout 4 series. First, I want to say thank you for the subs, which at the time of making this, I'm at 994, and that is so unreal to me. We're going to kick off this series with what you need to know before downgrading, starting with where are your mods and Fallout 4. You're going to need 7-zip to open mod archives. I show how to install and set it up in how to install and set up 7-zip and F4OC for Fallout 4. It'll be linked in the description. Let's open up your Steam, find and right click your Fallout 4, hover over Manage, and click Browse Local Files. If you go to the top of Explorer, this is your default Fallout 4 install path, your Fallout 4 Steam path. If you hover over your fallout4.exe, you'll see the game version briefly. Another way to view it is to right click Properties, Details, and in the description, you'll see the version of your Fallout 4 and file version. You'll need to know your game path and your game version constantly when you're modding. If your Fallout 4 is located in the program files, this is known to be a source of many issues with modding due to Windows security. I suggest watching how to move your Fallout 4 out of program files. I'll have a link in the description when it's live. Open your mod manager in Vortex. Go to settings, mods, and click the orange path. This is your mod data folder. Click the folder above it. In my case, it's the root directory. Right-click the folder and copy it, and make a new folder. I'll call it Vortex Backup. Paste the folder inside of here. In Settings, Mods tab. Click Suggest and hit Apply. This will make sure your mods aren't going to your game directory and are on the same drive. Then click Apply for hard link deployment, if you haven't done so. Then click Deploy. Go to the download tab, click the orange path. If you double click Fallout 4, this is where all your downloaded mods are at. You can choose to copy the download folder and paste it in your Vortex backup, but what I'm going to do is click roaming and copy the whole Vortex folder and paste it in the Vortex backup folder. If you can't access your app data, Open Explorer and click View, Show, and Hidden Items. Then you'll be able to see your Updata folder again in the Home tab. If you get this action can't be completed, just close Vortex and try again. Now you can go back and click Vortex Backup and right click it and compress it to a .zip file. Note, this might take a while depending on how many mods you have. You should be able to open it with Windows or with a program like 7-Zip. Here you'll find everything inside. And this is how you back up Vortex. I cover backamp save games and this is how to back up your Fallout 4 and saves. Link is in the description. In Mod Organizer 2, go to File, Manage Instances, click the instance you're in, Mines is Portable, and click Explore on the Base Folder path. Click the Root Folder, the Top Level Folder, Right click and copy. Make a new folder, I called it MO2 Backup, and paste the MO2 folder in here. You can click any other instance you have and click Explore. I click the top level folder, which is local, and right click MO2 to copy it, then paste it in MO2 Backup. You can right click MO2 backup and compress it to a .zip file. Note, this might take a while depending on how many mods you have. You should be able to open it with Windows or with a program like 7-zip. If you open it up and look, then you'll see everything is inside of it. And that is how to backup Mod Organizer 2. I cover backing up saved games and this is how to backup your Fallout 4 and saves. Link in the description. To install a mod in MO2, click the Download tab, and you can drag and drop the mod archive to this tab. You can drag and drop multiple archives too. Now just right click, Curie Info, 
to get rid of the red triangle. This will download the mod info from Nexus Mods into a meta file. You can delete them to remove the uninstalled status. You will have to query info again to get the mod information. You can also go to File, Install Mod, and open one to install it that way. Though MO2 can only install one mod at a time, so if you need to install multiple mods for MO2, this is a good plugin for doing that. I'm going to manually download it and open it. To install plugins, go into MO2, click the folder icon, click Open MO2 Plugins folder with the mod archive. Drag and drop install multiple mods.py into plugins folder. Restart mod organizer 2 and it should be in tools. Install mods. I wrote these three mods to show you how it works. If you click install mods, it'll open the MO2 download folder. I'm going to select all three and click open. It will install every mod. The only thing you have to do is press OK. I tried to find a setting where it doesn't prompt OK, but to no avail, I couldn't find one. In MO2, click Settings. Click the Nexus tab. I'll disconnect from Nexus to show you. Clear Cache a few times, then click Connect to Nexus. It'll open Nexus Mods. And if you're logged in already, you just need to click Authorize to allow the connection. I closed this window and accidentally doxed myself. Um, if you didn't click yes to associate with links, just click this button. I apologize, I was clicking so fast I accepted the dialog box by accident. This is the dialog box. You click yes, by the way. I tried to bring it back to show you guys, but it didn't work. So just press OK and MO2 will prompt you to restart. Just restart it. If you go into Nexus and find a mod, apparently I had this mod before. Go to the files page and click mod manager download. MO2 will have downloaded it. But so you can see it in action, I deleted the mod and re-downloaded it. <clears throat> I deleted the mod and re-downloaded it. I deleted the mod and re-downloaded it. Look at that beautiful progress bar. I found this auto installer for MO2, but for mod manager downloads. You install it the same way as the other tool we installed by opening the archive and opening the MO2 plugins folder and dragging the contents into it. Restart MO2 and if you go to tools and click auto installer, it'll disable it with a red circle. If you click it again, it'll be green. This just makes it so if you download a mod with Mod Manager on Nexus Mods, it'll automatically start the install process. One last thing before we move on, make sure your plugins are enabled or you might crash. Vortex Modders, if you have this error, please click fix because your .esp, ESL, or meshes folders will not load. To install a mod manually, click install from file. Click any archive and Vortex will install them automatically. You can disable this by going to settings, interface, and ticking these three off. Now when you go to install the mod, it'll be disabled and you'll have to manually install it and deploy. I suggest leaving them on though. To download the mod manager, go to settings, download, enable handle or disable and enable it again. Close Chrome entirely and click fix now if you have this. It'll open this box, just click continue. A vortex is a bit weird, but it'll fix it. It just won't let you know it did. Now when you download the mod manager, download. It'll send it to Vortex, and you can see it in your downloads tab where it's downloading the mod. Click mods and it'll automatically install it. One last thing before we move on, make sure your plugins are enabled and your mods are deployed, or you might crash. A note to Vortex and MO2 modders using profiles. If you remove or uninstall a mod, it'll uninstall it from all of profiles. 
If you change rules in Vortex, it'll change rules for all profiles. The only thing that is profile specific is enabling and disabling mods, save games, and INI files if you have those checked. And let's do modders. Press Control P or click the Profiles button. You can click Create to create a new profile. I called it New. And you'll see that profile specific save games and game INI becomes unchecked. You check these if you want game saves and INI settings to pertain to this profile only. I recommend ticking profile specific game INI files. So in the case your Fallout 4 custom.ini is missing, you can click the folder icon, click open INI folder, and copy Fallout 4, Fallout 4 custom, and Fallout 4 press. Click the folder icon again, open my games folder, and paste them here and let it overwrite. Or you can click on a profile and click copy to duplicate it. I called it default to. If I select the new, new profile, MO2 will load that profile and all the mods will be disabled. If I click profiles and select default to instead and load it, it'll have the same mods enabled as the original default profile that we copied from. Vortex modders, go to the dashboard, click profile management, yes. Click the drop down on your default profile, press clone to duplicate and name it to save it. You can check if you want to keep save games and INI files to that profile. I left them unchecked. If you enabled the profile and get this error, press revert all changes and click confirm. If you click save all your changes, Vortex will delete these files permanently. When you go to the mods tab in your clone profile, you will have the same enabled mods as your default one. If you want to add a new profile, click add Fallout 4 profile, name it anything you want and click save. You can enable it and this time all your mods will be disabled. MO2 users, click the folder icon and click open my games folder and delete all your INI configuration files. Then click the folder icon again and select Open INI folder. Delete just your Fallout 4, Fallout 4 Custom, and Fallout 4 Prefs. Run the Fallout 4 launcher and you'll get this error. Click OK. The launcher will recreate the INI files. And you can go to the INI editor in Tools. Click Fallout 4 Custom.ini. I recommend you level up by using Bethany to manage your any files. But for now, I'll show the archive invalidation, which I'll put in the description. Just copy the archive text here and paste it underneath anything in your Fallout 4 custom. Click save and close. If you go to open my games folder, you'll see that MO2 did not restore your Fallout 4 INI files. To restore them, run the actual Fallout 4 launcher from your Fallout 4 folder. This time I made sure I had windowed borderless ticked and pressed OK. Or click the folder icon, open INI folder, and copy Fallout 4, Fallout 4 Custom, Fallout 4 Prefs. Click the folder icon, open My Games folder, and paste them here, and let it overwrite. That is how you edit and restore your INI files for Mod Organizer 2. Open Vortex. If you launch the game and open Game Settings folder, which goes to your My Games and your Documents, You'll see these extra INIs, bait and base. These are added by Vortex after you played the game or reloaded Vortex. Select all of these INI files and delete them. Now load the game using Vortex's play button. The resolution will be wrong, but it'll create the Fallout 4 custom INI. And all you have to do is open game folder and load the Fallout 4 launcher. It'll give you a pop-up with your video settings. You can adjust things like windowed borderless, the resolution and exit. It'll update the INI file with your information. Then it'll load the game with the right video settings. If you just delete these files and try to recreate them with a the game launcher, you won't get a Fallout 4 custom INI. Not that it's needed, it's easier to add settings through here. Even if you play the game and reload it, it won't add Fallout 4 custom. You can force the Fallout 4 custom INI file to generate by activating a mod like CBBE. Now if you look, you'll see a Fallout 4 custom.ini. 
I'll show you how to add archive and validation, which is in the description, but I recommend leveling up by using Bethany to manage your INI files. Just copy the archive text here and paste it underneath anything in your Fall 4 custom and Control S to save. If you use Vortex, it is crucial that you know how to purge your mods. Don't worry, it's not that type of purge. In fact, this is pretty harmless. Vortex stores the mod data in its directory and links them to your data folder. But since I suck at explaining things, here are pictures. So this is my data folder right now. I want to clear it of Vortex links and make the game vanilla again. So no mods. Since we did this earlier, make sure in settings mods tab that your mod staging folder is correct and you are using hard link deployment. Now click your mods tab and click purge mods. It will give you a prompt explaining what it's doing. Click continue. Now, if we go back into my game folder, it'll be clear of Vortex links. But if you still see managed by Vortex links, they do nothing. But you can remove them by going to workaround and enabling cleanup empty directories. Now, if you go to purge and get this error, click revert all changes and press confirm. Click deploy, then click purge again. If you get this error or this one, just exit Vortex and open it again. So when you go to click purge, it'll work again. Remember to deploy your mods before loading a game or you will most likely crash. Well, I hope you learn something from watching this video. But since this is modding, there's always more things to learn. Thank you again for supporting me this far. See you in the next one. And thank you for the 1000 subscribers.